Welcome back, everybody. You're here with Will and I, man, from the Block Runner, and today we're going to talk about Reef. Before we talk about Reef, let's like uh, let's kind of ground ourselves and see what's going on with Bitcoin. Not not a whole lot. <laughs> not a whole lot, other than like it's just hanging out at forty six thousand dollars instead of hanging out at around thirty six thousand. So I mean, that's a pretty huge change from like the average price in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still the beginning, and I mean, there's speculation that other companies are about to jump into the Bitcoin uh, pool here. Yeah, there's definitely like no shortage of bullish uh, catalysts and, you know, bullish sentiment. That's for sure. Yeah. Every day we see like new major players starting to jump on this bandwagon. So, yeah. And and just recently we just had a a podcast discussing whether or not the United States was going to rain on this parade anytime soon. And um, we just just caught wind of India doing that, right? Yeah. Now India is actively pursuing banning cryptocurrencies and they have <clears throat> like uh, roughly 7 million users. So not a whole lot of cryptocurrency users in India, which surprises me. Yeah. Uh, according to that article. But uh, but countries are, are beginning to do it. I don't think the United States will do it, but there's a chance that they might. There is a chance. <laughs> and uh, even though we all know that it's very difficult to kind of shut down crypto, you just kind of move the pile of people from one, you know, current uh, use of crypto to a different current use of crypto like a dex and uh you just shift the problem somewhere else so mm-hmm. obviously you can't really shut it down but um that's but enough regardless, until then like we're in like only go up mode basically yeah so like keep, we'll keep this party going as long as we can but yeah speaking of that dude another thing in only up mode is reef yeah let's take a look at reef all right so um it had its initial launch and it kind of exploded to like a 30x here. Yeah, this was a Binance launchpad token. So and I think the reason for like this prolonged sell-off phase was because a lot of the Binance, I think the like the token holders or maybe they were allowed to stake a position into this token before it launched. But basically like a large portion of the token got airdropped to that community, which added on to the sell pressure for like a month or two, which was pretty fine. You know, if you were keeping an eye on that, that was a pretty good opportunity as long as you, I mean, Binance seems to be like a market driving force right now. Like they're starting to re-enter kind of like how they were in 2017. Binance had huge influence on the market, a mm-hmm. lot of push, you know, and I feel like Binance is just not starting to re-emerge. And like now that their chain, their, their Binance smart chain is, is up and active we're seeing protocols pretty much mirror protocols what we're seeing in ethereum DeFi. <laughs> they're being built over there on binance but they're actually seeing some user adoption you know because whether we like it or not man like it's, it's a better user experience on these alternate chains you know what i mean that's true yeah. and from the uh recent dip here is it's done in 8x so uh that's I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, we think it's going to keep going. It's definitely not the end. Reef is addressing like, I mean, obviously DeFi is the next big, I mean, it it is already the big thing in the crypto space. And so is Polkadot. Like we're identifying Binance Smart Chain is doing so well. And we're starting to see like a migration effect. People, users, like actual users of the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem are like branching out looking for new avenues, right? Like new, new, new playgrounds. You know, more right. sustainable ones where you don't have to pay two hundred dollars per per transaction. transaction. Yeah, yeah. So if we're seeing that happen with Binance and like Avalanche, Cardano's right around the corner, gonna have tons of adoption. Polkadot, we're only like a few months away from seeing like these these big DeFi platforms, you know, going live. Yeah, <laughs> and so what they're trying to do is they're they're a gateway to DeFi through liquidity and, and protocol aggregation. So they're trying to uh, tap into the liquidity of both centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. So yeah. if you're familiar with uh, One Inch or any of the more recent like swapping protocols, I think even MetaMask adopts like a, an aggregator for D or um, an aggregator for or decentralized liquidity mm-hmm. and uh it, it, so you you try to do a swap in any of these protocols and it tries to find you the best uh, best platform to, to perform that swap and you reduce the slippage which means that you get more for the swap and uh and then the fees are they, they try to get you the lowest fees but i mean ethereum is ethereum so um you're not going to get away from the gas transactions but what reef tries to do is take that same functionality that you would get from an aggregator for decentralized exchange but also include centralized exchanges as well and um, apparently this is all ai driven too so yeah. the thing about reef is man reef makes some like pretty bold claims and like you know some fun they're tackling some foundational issues to the DeFi sector especially the fragmentation thing that, that that's one of your biggest yeah. is 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> Everything is like fragmented into separate protocols, like little silos. So if you're like a true DeFi degen, dude, you have to like really understand each protocol like on a, on a deep level, right? And hop around from each one. And it's, especially in Ethereum, like that is not a cheap endeavor. You That's know right. what I mean? That's right. Yeah, like consolidating all that activity on the one central platform is that's definitely like the, the play. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But still, this whole AI driven stuff, man, like, oh, I know AI is like a huge tech buzzword, right? It is. But what does it actually mean? <laughs> it doesn't really explain it here. Uh, you know, are they using Watson or are they using Siri or Alexa? I mean, who, what are they doing? I, I, I there's I no. It, like the AI part needs like an explanation on itself, right? Like, yeah. for one, like, I mean, a lot of us don't know how AI works. Well, yeah. AI predominantly works through training it's like it's like you're trying to shoot a, a free throw and you have to practice to be really good at free throws well the same thing goes with ai like uh open ai the one that uh that elon sort of contributed to building they connected it to a game what was that game that you used to play i man uh dota dota yeah they connected yeah. to that game and just the the application of ai connected to a game it played itself for like i don't know like 80 hours straight or 100 hours straight and then it up figuring out how to play the game and then after it figure out how to play the game you pitch that ai to any like really good human at this game and it would just dominate that human every single time yeah because it's 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 encountered all those moves that human is capable of registering like yeah. it's, it's encountered that probably like a million times over because you could just continually run these these programs right or this i don't know what to call it this ai like yeah. it's, it's it's like a human that never has to sleep that's right basically <laughs> never has to eat you know you just but, keep going keep grinding the most important thing is you never had have to tell the ai what the rules of dota is it would just figure it out himself and so when you're connecting an ai to something like this i mean it's supposed to figure out how the best way to give you the best yield on your you know yielding protocol or give you the best interest rate on your uh, um, liquidity mining but uh there's I mean, no there's no because, details here it, yeah that that's one of the big drawbacks like if we're trying to identify like you know, reasons to be cautious. It's just these big and bold claims, you know, are, are not fully well described, but like the way you're explaining it is, 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 is important because, you know, th this is pretty intimidating to the normal common yeah. financial DeFi ecosystem user. Like I, I, it's kind of daunting to, to try and have to have that responsibility of yourself to determine like, well, what are the best liquidity sources? Yeah, that's know? right. Yeah. The, what they're working on is, is infinitely important because like you're saying, if, uh, if you're the burden of, of work is on the the individual user to figure out what the best liquidity sources is to c perform a swap. Yeah, that's not going to be the best user experience. So you yeah, that's need... not going. That's never going to penetrate like mainstream. Absolutely. You know what I mean, and that's that's the goal of everything in crypto is how do you penetrate the mainstream? Non-sexual, of course. <laughs> 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 but yeah, but yeah, so it's going to come down to like yeah, lifting that burden, you know, of like comp just complex complexity of this whole damn thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at the interface. Have we even looked at it yet? Yeah. Um, well, let's. Uh, so the roadmap. There's not a whole lot to say other than there's one very important piece. So the the website talks about how they're trying to connect to Polkadot, and one of the things that we want to say about projects being on Polkadot is they're on Polkadot after they secure a parachain. And mm -hmm. to secure a parachain, it's going to be one of 100 slots early on, and there's not that many projects trying to get a parachain slot so it's not going to be ultra competitive however you still need a parachain to be on polka dot and mm. so the one of the notable things here is that there is a connection to moonbeam yeah dude, one of our favorite like polka dot gems coming up if you want to know more like we made a video like maybe like a month ago or something about moonbeam so if you want to understand but yeah moonbeam is going to be one of those critical like bridging uh well they they make it easy for any developer to get access to polka dot by them being connected to a parachain themselves which potentially they eventually will be mm -hmm. they create a platform where other developers can build on moonbeam which has already access to polka dot which just helps make it easier for a developer to gain the security level of polka dot and the inter interoper interoperability of polka dot as well so that's why moonbeam is valuable um so yeah that's that's one thing that we wanted to say about the roadmap and Let's go to uh, Parachain Live here. 
No, that's and you have the ability to buy reef with ETH or USDT and get LP tokens, so you can stake your your ETH and reef um, to mine uh, liquidity provider tokens, and then there's bonds. So this is a more of a recent development, right? Mm -hmm. You could lock yeah. up your reef for six months, one year, or two years, and you get the uh, proportional 32 percent yeah so this is a fixed yield you know financial instrument you yeah. know and, you know again if you listen following us we're real big on fixed yield as boring as that sounds we recognize the importance of that right like yeah you know non-variable yield is is important especially to people with you know big big money we try to figure out like what is this refund thing all about do you how are they achieving these fixed you know interest rates or yield rates and stuff fortunately not much you know again not much yeah they talk about uh the bond but they don't talk about how they achieve these these interest rates but which led to a larger conversation that we we're having earlier offline where as crazy as it is to receive 32 percent on uh on a on a yield which is ridiculously high these tokens are probably minted um upon providing that bond to to this protocol and it, it's the same as fiat currency being generated out of thin air as soon as you make a deposit into your bank account right fractional reserve banking where the deposit is held as a fractional reserve and then new money is printed out of thin air from that bank in a new loan that somebody gets from that same bank mm -hmm. and so just like money is sort of printed out of thin air with fiat currencies you can have cryptocurrencies sort of just manifest out of thin air and people just have this inherent belief of a value like Ethereum or Bitcoin. And yeah. that value just continues going up based on sentiment. Yeah. And, and like confidence. So, so, yeah, I guess like at first introduction of this, of this like reality, it seems like, man, like is DeFi just like, you know, some kind of like big coded Ponzi scheme? Yeah, it, right. It might not look like a Ponzi, like that we're traditionally used to because, it's, you know, it's all coded. So it gives it like a nice little, a higher esteem level, right? Yeah. It's like automated Ponzi. <laughs> it, it kind of feels that way, like from a, a, a psychological perspective, you know, people are only like ru rushing in to generate yield off of these like vapor tokens because of the, the like you said the sentiment and the confidence of the token it, itself right. that they're they're all chasing after right and then you start thinking about like man we already do this in traditional like in, in our real world in the physical world yeah and we've been doing it for a hundred hundred years at least in the yeah traditional. so it's really not that crazy you know like our whole society is underpinned underpinned on like this this currency we've we've minted out of nowhere out of yeah. nothingness and yeah. it's and it's only based only reason this, the financial infrastructure never c collapses is our confidence in that currency hasn't that's failed right. yet that's right so like these DeFi protocols like a sushi that thing is going to collapse as soon as everybody thinks sushi is useless right exactly right um, as long as everyone doesn't think that sushi's going to the moon, you know what I that's mean. Right. All these protocols, well, DeFi in, in general. That's exactly right. It's just like the like psychology of a currency, pretty much. It's pretty. It's pretty crazy to think about. You know? Yeah, and and so what Reef is working on is actually pretty important. Uh, I I just want to see more details on how they achieve this, just because that's part of the fundamental analysis is to figure out you know what exactly they're they're working on here. And as you can see here, they took the snapshot of a gas fee at fifty dollars, which this will never break mainstream, right? <laughs> fifty dollar transactions, that's yeah. cheap. In the last few days, you get a fifty dollar transaction, that's a pretty good deal. So yeah, like there's there's some serious issues with Ethereum and yeah, because of it, I think the market's definitely losing their patience with, you know, the community figuring out how to, you know, to address the scaling issues. So I think we're moving into the part the phase of the market cycle where we're going to start to see these alternate ecosystems start to boom like polka dot like avalanche cardano eos yeah. you know icon all of them there's actually a shit ton of them <laughs> you know if yeah. you're not aware like the, they these protocols have been in production for years now and like i think now is the time where like the market's going to finally finally give in to that whole ethereum maximalist sentiment we've had over the years like you know either yeah. ethereum or bust but I we got to be careful, though. Way. So the, the market could say, you know, Cardano and, and all these like different blockchains have value. But that doesn't mean that's where the de developers are. That doesn't True. mean where the innovation is being had. Yeah. And it it yeah. doesn't mean, um, you know, the masses are going to be using, you know, better applicable blockchains because the innovation is actually happening in, in uh, you know, on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. It's like, yeah, you can make a ton of money with these different blockchains, but... 
Is it where the value is? Is that where the value is? That's the real question. Yeah, the value is in the developer ecosystem for sure. Yeah. And that's why we're so big on Polkadot because we, we we have evidence to support that the developer ecosystem is there. Yeah. And it's actually outpacing the growth of the Ethereum developer ecosystem. Yeah, you know, that's which right. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. So if, if we have that indicator, then, you know, that's good enough for me. Yeah. For, for a fundamental analysis, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, that's like this is out of the whole umbrella of like alternative alternate blockchain solutions to Ethereum. You know, Polkadot stands out among the rest of them because of that one solo, yes. you know, data point, basically. Yeah. And a huge topic for Reef is that they 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 add interoperability by supporting Solidity smart contracts. So then we were discussing like what, what what exactly does that mean? And it just means essentially that the same smart contracts that are running on the Ethereum network where you have gas fees for pretty much every single interaction with that smart contract are now happening on Reef and therefore on Polkadot. And so theoretically, the same contracts that you interact with are significantly cheaper, right? Almost nothing on gas. So that's the only difference. Now the the real technological like barrier is what if you have like an nft on ethereum and that same nft has a smart contract that is now running on polka dot right or reef uh, for this example is there going to be a bridge i mean what does it mean to have an nft on ethereum that can now you know move in polka dots ecosystem yeah and like how what, what is the friction involved with that that bridge you're describing is there a claiming process is right there- exactly because that's kind of like what we're used to with layer two. Like, you know, yeah, you can do all, you can execute all this marketplace activity on a layer two, but at the end of the day, it's whenever you want that actualized value of yeah. these assets, like you gotta, you gotta go through some kind of gateway, you know, and then it's, it's, it's a very high friction process. Yeah. Is, are we talking about the same thing with Polkadot? We don't really know yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, to give you a better example is if, if you're trying to sell an NFT, and uh, the eyeballs are all on OpenSea, and there's a, an OpenSea equivalent on Polkadot with a significantly less fees, right, gas fees, the eyeballs are still on the original OpenSea, right? And so you have a higher probability of selling that NFT on OpenSea than it is that they're an equivalent on Polkadot. And yeah. so there's a different kind of liquidity than the liquidity they're talking about when you're, when you're mining tokens or swapping tokens or whatever. There's yeah. the, where is the money? Where are the eyeballs and how much money do those eyeballs are worth, right? Th- there's a lot of issues with just, uh, you know, deploying on Polkadot that have nothing to do with the actual technical deployment. But Reef is working on it and uh, th- there seems to be a lot of potential here. So we're, we're definitely yeah. going to keep eyes on, on this one for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and for those of y'all who don't even know what NFTs are, just in case, I just had this thought while you were explaining it. Yeah. Like we haven't even really explained NFTs yet <laughs> since we started this daily trajectory of posting videos. That's so true. That's true. Pretty, yeah, pretty soon we're going to have to drop some NFT bombs. You know what I mean? Because it's actually NFTs are starting to take off in a big way. As I far, mean, we're, we're Logan talking Paul H- is talking about NFTs too. Yeah, everybody, dude. Everyone wants to make, everyone wants to, you know, make NFTs these days. Smart Cuban, yeah. Soldier Boy. That's right. Fucking like Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting <laughs> kind of wild over here, dude, in NFT land. So, yeah. It's, it's in another important sector we'll have to touch on here pretty soon. For sure. All right. Well, uh, first, I want, I want to thank everybody for those comments. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at The Blocker and also at Metazone.io. And let us know what you think about Reef and uh, Polkadot for that matter. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.